Hey guys, welcome back to Oak Abode. I hope you don't mind the sound of some peeping because today I'm doing a video with our new chicks for 2022. Today I'm just gonna go over the whole chick setup that we have this year. We've changed a few key things, I guess three main key things. It is so much easier and it is so much cleaner than anything we've done in the past. And as a bonus, it's also cheaper. But I guess there are one, two, three, four main components that I'll go over. And if you wanna stick around for the end of the video, I will introduce our new chicks one by one. So there's the brooder container, and then there's a feeder, there's a waterer, and then there is a heating plate or a heated brooder, which keeps the chicks warm. In March in Wisconsin, it is way too cold to have baby chicks outside without a mama. Some people do put them outside with a heat lamp or a brooder. I'll go into why I don't use heat lamps in a second, but I've also had people message me and say that they had chicks die because they thought that as long as there was a heat plate that they would be okay. Definitely not true. It can get too cold for chicks outside even with just the heat plate itself. So we like to keep ours inside. That way we don't have to worry. The main thing that we changed this year is the brooder container. So I got this container off of Amazon. I'll link it for you guys below. So this is more of a small animal playpen. Number one, it zips all the way around. So it is kind of like a tent material. It's got mesh, so it's super breathable, but it zips all the way around and it's totally enclosed. The reason that this is a really good thing is because chickens love to scratch and especially baby chicks. You won't be surprised how quickly they get power in those little chicken legs. When they get older, they send those shavings flying and they end up everywhere. This is really nice because when they get older and even now, they kick stuff around and it's not gonna come out. Even if it hit the ceiling of the brooder itself, it's all zipped in so we don't get shavings on the floor, which is amazing. It is such a game changer. Another thing I'm loving about this brooder container is that it is light. I always end up having to move my chicks for some reason or another, but having a big tub to move around is just clunky and annoying. So the nice thing about this is it's light. So if I do want to move them, it's easier on the body to move. Now it is bigger. This probably has at least twice the square footage or floor space that our previous brooders had for kind of the same number of chicks. So for that reason, I'm really hoping that we fiddle with them a lot less. Last winter, we were kind of planning to make a YouTube video building like the ultimate chick brooder. We were gonna have it really big and we're gonna show how to construct it. But as everybody knows right now, lumber and just construction materials are ridiculous. And it was gonna cost so, so much more to try and build a big, heavy, clunky brooder than it was gonna be just to buy this tent off Amazon. So I am super happy about this find. I wanted to share this with you guys so in case you are looking for a brooder now or even just like a playpen. We do have a playpen we really like and it comes, doesn't come with, but you can buy a cover for it too. So I'm gonna link the chick playpen that we like to use for the outdoors. I'm gonna link the cover for it. That way we don't have to worry so much about predators. But as far as having something that's cheap, something that completely keeps the mess inside, this is a real win so far. I don't trust the bottom to be waterproof. We're using a new water this year that is not spilling. The traditional kind of like waters you just buy from the chick store. Those are the ones I used for like four years and I would prop it up, doesn't matter. They would always still find ways to knock it over. So when I was using that water, it was really important that the bottom of the brooder container was waterproof. I don't know if the bottom of this is waterproof. I think it's probably water resistant. Don't quote me on that. What we did is we put a tarp underneath this container itself so that on the off chance that there is some kind of big liquid spill, that way our floors are protected so it's not as aesthetically pleasing, but the floors are protected just in case. In summary, this thing has been a total game changer and the bigger size has meant that the shavings go a lot further. Okay, the second thing I wanna talk about is the water that we chose. So in the past, like I mentioned, we kind of used the traditional chick waters that are cheap at the store, readily available when you pick up chicks, especially when they're an impulse buy, which I think most of us are guilty of. Believe me, I hate to buy things twice, but this year, after four years of hating raising chicks because of the water problems, this year I splurged and I got a nipple drinker. I was worried that the chicks wouldn't be able to figure out the nipple drinker, not the case. These chicks figured out the nipple drinker not even 15 minutes after I put it in. And all I did was take my finger and tap on the nipple drinker part just a little bit. And I kid you not, these chicks, they were only a few days old, so they're super impressionable at that point. But these chicks all ran over to check out what I was pecking at. And then they started pecking at it and within minutes they were squared away with the nipple drinker. The really nice thing about this one is they don't knock it over. It's not an open water drinking system. 
like the other water was. There might be some little drips. I haven't honestly seen the bedding underneath become more wet and that's something that I wanted to watch for. As always, I will link this exact one for you guys in the description box below. This one comes with two attachments. We tried the red attachment first and it didn't work all that well. The chicks just kind of had to work really hard to get the water. That attachment I think is better for keeping excess water from dripping out if that's your main concern. But for really young chicks, we switched to this other attachment, the black one with the yellow tip and they love it. And a lot of people actually believe that chickens prefer this kind of drinker too because if you elevate it, they can just stick their beak where the water comes out and then it goes just straight down their throat while they drink instead of having to dip their beaks, toss their head up. So not only are we having less water mess, they're not able to knock it over because it's bigger and it's gonna stay put as long as they keep it decently filled, but also it's easier for the chicken. So I'm so, this has been so worth the peace of mind and just not having to change out their water as much as the other thing. It keeps the water so much cleaner. Of course, there's not as much of a drowning risk either. It's just a little more investment. I really do think it'll save us money too because we're not gonna go through nearly as many shavings because when they would dump over or make a mess out of their other waterer or what would happen is sometimes they would kick so many shavings into the open waterer that it would become like a hill and then the water would seep through the hill of shavings and just continue, it would continue sucking water out. We would have to throw away giant containers of shavings more than once. So cleaner water, sure it's gonna save us money on bedding in the long run. The chickens like it better, lower maintenance. Kind of mad at myself for waiting four years to splurge and buy this one. All right, kind of along those lines in terms of investments that just make the chicks happier. I've talked about the heated brooder plates before, why I will never use heat lamps again. The heated brooder plates are just a more modern way to raise chicks. They're not nearly as much of a fire risk as the heat lamps are. And if you even read most of the heat lamp packaging, usually they say don't leave unattended, which is never a good sign. Most people can't keep an eye on chicks 24 seven until they're grown up, especially, I mean, everybody has to sleep, right? Not only are the heated brooder plates safer than a heat lamp, the chicks actually like them better too because they're dark, they're cozy. They're a lot more like a mama hen would be to them. So they feel safer. Yes, they're a little more expensive than a heat lamp, but I believe it's well worth it. Not only for the safety and peace of mind, but also because the chicks like it better. I like to keep my heated brooder plates on an incline. So that way the chicks can kind of, I have like one side lower, one side higher. I don't know if that's recommended or not. So make sure for sure you follow the instructions of whatever heated brooder plate that you get. I like to do that with mine because then the chicks can find the perfect little heat spot and pick what makes them happy instead of having to be all in or all out. We have had a few different heated brooder plates in the past. We got a bigger one this year, so I will link that for you below. The downside is that chicks do like to hop up on them. They're a flat surface and wherever chicks walk, they leave little chick poop. So full transparency with you guys, as always, I do hate that these brooders that they walk on them and that they poop on them and that I do have to occasionally clean that off. But another upside is they're easier to set up. I remember I used to always struggle to find the best place to clamp the heat light on. And there's actually a lot of room for user error with heat lamps. Way too often do I get messages from people saying that their chicks all died because they had the heat lamp too close and they didn't realize that they cooked their chicks or they had it too far away and the chicks eventually froze. I mean, there's a lot of room for user error. I really think the brooders are best for anybody, but especially for newbies, the heated brooders are a lot harder to screw up than the heat lamps. And the last thing that I'll talk about is just the feeder. So there's not a lot to say here, but it's just kind of the same feeder that we've always used. If you want to get a feeder that's scratch proof so they can't waste feed, they do make feeders like that. I'll link the one that we have and I'll also link some of the more scratch proof ones. We've used those with the adult hens and they do, I think they do quite save quite a bit of money on feed. What I will say, since I have a lot of people ask, how do you train chicks to be really friendly? is one thing that we like to do is we like to just soak some of the feed in water. Make sure you research how to safely ferment feed if you wanna do this or you just keep it for a day or two and um, because you can get mold problems and that can damage your chicks, obviously. It can make them sick. People have asked us before if we ferment feed to save feed and it's supposed to be healthier for the chickens. I did the first year and I don't do it anymore because I didn't find that it made that much of a difference in the feed bill and it was a heck of a lot of work. 
so I don't do it anymore. But on just a small scale, soaking the feed in water is a really easy way to get safe trick chick treats. For some reason, the chicks go crazy for just kind of like gooey feed mash. That's kind of how I've trained them to my hand. I do love to use Grub Terra treats for older chicks and older chickens. Ask the company, don't take my word for this. I wanna say they say around eight weeks is when they can start to have the black soldier fly larvae. I do know they don't really recommend it for little chicks this age. I'll still link the Grub Terra for you guys since you'll probably want it for your adult chickens anyway. It's a really good, healthy treat. Really helpful for training them to come when they're called outside. You can also just use kitchen scraps too. I mean, don't think that you have to buy a treat, but if your chickens are spoiled like ours, they'll probably turn up their beaks at a lot of kitchen scraps and they'll want something special. So that's what we use the Grub Terra for. So what else do we have in here? We have a rock. I don't know why we have a rock. It's, I guess, for them to play on, but I'm sure they'll just poop on it and it'll attract flies. So we'll probably end up taking that out. I put together a list of some chicken toys a few years ago. Um, if you wanna have like perches and things, some people say it's better for their feet to have different surfaces to stand on instead of just the shaving. So I'll link that for you guys, but it's not necessary. I, they do enjoy it though. They definitely enjoy it. So really that's it. Four things in our brooder that are really important. If you want more details on how to raise baby chicks, kind of the 101 behind that, made a whole video last year. So I spelled out step by step what I like to use. I would just kind of suggest maybe instead of using the products I linked in that video, I like the products in this video a lot better. You also might just have something laying around the house that you can use too. So that's totally cool. All right, you wanna meet our chicks? I think I'm just gonna introduce them one by one. I'll tell you what breed they are. I did a whole podcast on the breeds that we're considering this year and why. So I'll link the podcast for you below. And actually this isn't all of them. We're gonna pick up some more this weekend. Chicken math gets to the best of us. This is either a well summer or a cream leg bar. They seem to have slightly different colored leg. I'm assuming whoever has more of a cream leg is gonna be the cream leg bar. I think this one's a well summer. I think the well summers have more of a yellow leg, but do not quote me on that. This one here is a little black Australorp. So the black Australorps are a dual purpose heritage breed, I believe. So they will breed true. And I've heard they lay a lot of eggs and they're also supposed to be really hardy. This one is a Lavender Orpington. We got two of these, and people always say that Orpingtons are supposed to be the quiet ones, but these little Lavender Orpingtons, maybe the buffs are quieter, but these little Lavender Orpingtons are our loudest chicks so far, so we'll have to see if that holds true with when they become adults too. All right, here we have a cute little buff Orpington. I think they are some of the cutest babies. Buff Orpingtons are a really popular breed they're a dual purpose heritage breed, so they do breed true. They are supposed to have pretty good meat on them, and they're supposed to lay a good amount of eggs, although, although I don't think they're super layers, but a couple things that make them special is that they tend to go broody, I believe, so they might make good mamas. But also a lot of people say that their buff Orpingtons are kind of the nicest and the tamest. These ones definitely seem tamer than the lavender Orpingtons, so it's kind of an interesting distinction. And finally, I have a little Rhode Island Red here. Her name's Poppy. We kind of get like one random Rhode Island Red every year for no reason. But the other one's Pip, Pippy. I think Pippy or Peppy. So this one is Poppy. And if we get a boy, I think his name will be Pappy. So that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed meeting our chicks and seeing our new updated chick setup. I hope it's helpful for somebody out there because we are finding this round of chicks has been the easiest so far. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna stay posted for more content in the future, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Like I mentioned, I'll link our podcast and our Instagram below. And we also have a website where I will summarize all the points I just talked about and I'll link everything in this video also. Please leave a comment below with any of your favorite chick raising tips, especially ones that have made your life easier because after four years of messy chick raising, I am so glad to have found little tidbits of info like this. Any advice you can offer helps. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.